Hello, my dear friends. Welcome back to A Defense of Poetry by P. V. Shelley. Now, today, what we are going to see is the creative process as such, as explained by Shelley. Keats has already given us a clue in his famous Ode to a Nightingale. The creative process is harmonious madness. It's a madness, frenzy. No? It's a madness, but that madness is harmonious. Or you can say, a harmonious frenzy. As Polonius remarks about uh, Hamlet, this method in madness. It's a method in madness. The mind in creation is like a fading coal, C O A L coal. What happens is the wind blows over it. The wind is inconstant, not always in the same intensity. The inconstant wind may awaken it to transitory brightness. Transitory means changing. So the wind will blow. Sometimes it is intense, then the core will, will burn for two or three minutes and again subside. It is like this. Creative process is like that. Then Shelley contrasts creative process with the reasoning. Reasoning is within human determination. See, if I want, I can sit down and think for some time and write an essay on stars. Again, I can, I determine, I take the decision, I say, I'm going to write an essay on this. I may be able to do that, say, a few books for references and so, I can do it. Reasoning is within your willpower. The will has power over your reasoning. You think that I will sit down and do something, you can sit down and do. You think that I want, to, I, I want to play chess, you can sit down and play chess with the computer, if you, if you don't have a friend. Or suppose you want to do a sum in mathematics, you can do it. Even if you are tired, you can do it. So reasoning is within your power. It is within your determination. But suppose you go, uh, go out and see. You go out and sit in a garden and say that today I am going to write a poem on, on a crow. Because <laughs> we don't have a nightingale here. <laughs> or you say a skylark or a nightingale himself. Suppose you say like, or a parrot. See? Or a squirrel. See, I want to. You can see squirrels playing on the trees, jumping here and there. But no words. When you try, take your pen and start writing, there will be no words. See, that is creative process. You have absolutely no power. See? It comes from within. The power of creative uh, process comes from within. It is like the color of a flower. You have seen, no? Buds. When our buds stay, it has one color. After two days, if you go and examine its color, the color has changed. Further, when it blossoms, again, the color changes. Then after some time it fades, the color changes. So a rose flower, for example, you take from bud to the full blown flower, you will see the color change. Exactly like this. Exactly like this, says Shelley, that the, the, the imagination or your ability to create your creative process is the becomes, sometimes it will decline, sometimes it will, it will come out, in, it will be in effluence, you can see. Exuberant ex effluence of imagination. And then, for some time it will remain with you. And as you approach, sometimes it will depart. It's absolutely no guarantee to sit down with a your mind is full of imagination. So you think that you want to write a poem about the blue sky. And you go and 
Just look at it for uh, two or three hours. Start writing. Some days you may not get it. Some days it may. In five minutes you will be able to do, you will be able to write that word. That's a different thing. So, it's no guarantee. Whether its influence will remain durable throughout the process of creation, not possible. We cannot say predict. The all its purity and force will it remain throughout the process of creation. It is not, you cannot predict. You cannot uh, predict. That's a call. As he asked, already we have seen, huh? like a fading call. And then what will happen? The wind blows over it. It shines, it fades. Shines, fades, it just disappears for some time. It becomes a dark piece. See? And then again suddenly it will brighten up. This is... When you start the gravity process, the process may be at its height. But as you proceed, it will wane and wane and wane and may disappear. You will feel, oh, it is like, it is like waiting, you go to a forest, determining that I will today see a skylark. And sit there. You, you take, you took your breakfast with you, lunch with you, tea with you, friends with you, and just look. No bird will come. Because the bird is not under your control. So, creative process is like that. The most, when, when, it, when what happens, the composition begins, it brightens. Then as the composition proceeds, it will, the inspiration will decline. What to do? Nobody can do anything with that. The most glorious passages of poetry. It's only a feeble shadow of the original conception. That is the important thing. The most glorious poetry it is not the original uh, inspiration. The most glorious passages of poetry is only a feeble shadow of the original conception. So what does that mean? Means, in this original conception you cannot see. You cannot put that into, into your paper. See that? It's only a shadow what you see. To a skylark by Shelley, we praise it. Poorest thou, unpremeditated art, full throated ease, all those things we say. But that is only a feeble shadow of what is actually in your mind. The ideal and the actual, the Plato's theory, the duality of existence. It can be applied here also in your creative process. Because the actual you can never see. You never experience. The actual still remains as an ideal. Then what happens is, when you start writing, you get only the copy of it. You don't get the ideal. The finest passages of poetry only. The finest passages of poetry are not produced by your labor and study. Hard work and study. You burn the midnight oil. And then you say that I will definitely write something fine today. Nothing will happen. <laughs> Nothing will happen. Then you are, you will be like the disappointed person who went determined to see a skylark in the forest. <laughs> you cannot do that. Or sometimes what happens, you know, you know a place where you have got plenty of squirrels playing and jumping and moving around and all that. Then a guest comes to your house and says, oh, 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 hello, you come, we will go to a forest near there is plenty of squirrels. When you go there, there, there may not be even a single one. Even, even not a baby squirrel. <laughs> all, of, all of them might have disappeared. The creative process is like that. You have absolutely no power. Milton said, no, what did he say in Paradise Lost? 
the muse dictated to me to me the unpremeditated song so even paradise lost such a long poem an epic poem he says the muse dictated to me this uh, this unpremeditated song so everything is unpremeditated unpremeditated means no control over your reason or your determination Keith Keith says about no ordinary thing he says viewless swings of poesy you cannot say the wings of poesy but it is viewless it can sometimes take you to the, uh, you sometimes your mind will soar and soar and soar till you cannot till you melt or the whole thing you and your imagination vanish into thin air can happen like that. So there is viewless wings of poesy. You are transport. The very sublime, Longinus. The very sublime. You are transport. So it can happen. Now you can see, no? Ah, uh, he says, Skylar to a Skylar. He says, Bird thou never wert. Not a material thing. the creative process is not a material thing and what is it he says pours the full heart in profuse strains of unpremeditated art this the creative process in profuse strains of unpremeditated art unpremeditated song sorry not art so in profuse strains of unpremeditated song that is the creative process profuse strains even that profuse strain is a copy of the actual the copy is if the copy is a fire a burning fire like the fire that moses saw that the fire the tree is on the bush is on fire but the imagination is on fire but you cannot transfer that imagination to on to your paper or slate to whatever you you write because as it the can or like, like electricity you know electricity what happens you know as the electricity the there is a loss during conduction there is loss during conduction so you are imagine a creative process is like that as the electricity moves from one point to another point but you start with 100% then it reaches to be 20% so transmission loss takes place transmission loss scientists are now trying to plug that how far they will be they will be successful or not we do not know so but in this electricity transmission loss may be some 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 day or other they may be able to plug but creative process you cannot do it it is unpremeditated and then it is that is why shelley says there is there you have got a word 56 readings of the opening lines of Lodovico Ariosto's Orlando Furioso that is an epic Orlando Furioso Italian Lodovico Ariosto Ariosto as Lodovico Ariosto epic So there are fifty-six readings of the opening line. Now, sure, you are so anxious about the opening line, isn't it? The opening line is like this: "Of loves and ladies, knights and arms, I sing." The opening line: "Of loves and ladies, O 
of loves and ladies of loves and ladies and then says knights and arms i think of loves and ladies knights and arms knights and arms i sing this is the opening line of course written in italian italian poet poet see of loves and ladies knights and arms i sing of courtesies and many a bearing feet of courtesies and of many a daring feet so this is all these are the two opening lines now it's there is about shelly says 56 readings of this now it may be 101 readings as it the title is of orlando furious means Orlando in frenzy. Orlando is angry. Orlando is uh, in fury. Different ways. Of course, there is a similarity. Understand? Yes. Let's think of the wasteland. There is an industry that has grown around the wasteland, and the interpretation of the poem. So it is. A critical industry, I can say. It's about hundred years now. Nineteen twenty-two, it will be hundred years. Ah, uh, twenty twenty-two, it will be hundred years. Nineteen twenty-two, of course, it is published. Twenty twenty-two, it will be hundred years. Still, people are trying to find out its meaning. April is the coolest month. Why? 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 How can you say April is the coolest month? It, it it goes totally against all our beliefs, all the uh, phenomena in nature, natural science, so the common sense. But why? April is there because it mixes memory and desire, and I shall show you fear in a handful of dust. Understand that? A population, a people who are so anesthetized, they they least care about April or May or June, rain or winter. That they want winter kept us warm, covering up in forgetful snow, feeding a little life with the dried sugar. That's enough for. The denizens of the wasteland they want only little life. Therefore, all the glory and the perfumes of April, life of life of the, life springing here and there, and all around the smaller flowers make a melody. They keep their eyes open throughout the night, and they sing. The wasteland people. So April is the coolest one. Because throughout there is only fear. See, that's one way of interpreting. There are many other ways of interpreting this. That's another thing. So how many? How how differently? In King Lear, there is there are two words. Ripeness is all. What is that? Ripeness is all. If you have read King Lear, you can see that ripeness is all. What do you mean by that? See how many interpretations there, how many uh, ways it has been. The meaning has been ripeness is all. Ripeness is all. That's all. This is a lie. You can see that. Then there is another. Shakespeare uses never five times, as if Shakespeare is fond of writing an imposition. 
never, 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 never. Why? Right? Each never has a romantic significance. What is, what is it all about? This is not the place to explain. <laughs> that we will do in some other time when we take up. So, already I have come halfway through Johnson's criticism of Shakespeare and some more lectures that we made. And then while doing that, I may be able to explain this rightness is so. And for the timing, you understand, the multiplicity of interpretations and meaning. Understand? So you have got instinct and intuition of the poetical faculty. See? You cannot get by observation. So this instinct and, and intuition, you can see, you can vividly see if you want. You can, it is tangible in the plastic arts. In poetry it is not, because it is viewless swings of poetry. In plastic arts, there are, for example, painting and uh, sculpture, you can see that. As the painting grows, you can see it in front of you. Or as the statue is slowly developed. What happens is you can observe it. Plastic art, you can observe. Great pictures and great statues are like the infants growing like a, in a mother's womb. Like the infant growing in mother's womb like that. An infant growing and developing in the imagination of a great artist. Then you can observe it. Because today you will see one shape, tomorrow the shape will change. Finally, David, 17 feet statue of David. See, that you can see, observe it. Or you can see Michelangelo, if you were alive so in those days, you could go and watch one day the sketches there, another day some light, another day some color and things like that. You can see. But in poetic creation, you cannot see it. Ah, you can see lines written, but today I write for lines, tomorrow the whole thing will disappear. Because I am not satisfied with that. Yes. So it is, in poetic creations it is less observable, but in plastic arts like picture, painting, picture and statues, making statues, it is observable. That's all. That's all the difference. That's all. Even the, another interesting thing about the creative process is the poet himself cannot give you a, an account of this. How I got this, how I managed to write this, etc. Highly imaginative poetry. It comes as a thunderbolt. It hits the mind of the artist and then what happens is he cannot but he is in a cast to the situation. You cannot but. Sometimes you can see you know, some people that they have narrated to us their experience. Midnight they get up and start writing. Very often what happens is that, you know, when you are least, when you least expect, at that time this creative process will start. Start vibrating. That is the creative process. So the reasoners and the mechanists who despise poetry, Shelley says, what is that? It is within your power. But this is something, viewless swings of poesy, harmonious madness, where the person who experiences has no power over it. Well, the person who experiences it cannot tell you anything about it. How long it will last? The person who experiences Himself is helpless. Understand? Creative process is such. So how? It is like lightning. It comes like lightning. It shakes you. You, you are caught 
We are gripped. The charge is there. It has to be discharged. Otherwise you will go mad. That is creative process. You have no power over its, its inception, beginning. You have no power uh, uh, during its process. You have no power whether when it will to, to tell anyone that, predict that whether it will last or how long it will last. That is the creative process. You understand? Take any of great any of the great poems. See that the some people say the wasteland is a five-act play. Some others say the wasteland is each section relates to one of the aspects of uh, the the uh, aspect of the elements of this world, like fire and so on. Earth, fire, and uh, earth, fire, spirit, and like that. Somebody, there are like many explanations are there. One of this, one of these. The Cleopatra's description of her journey down the sickness as described by described by in a barbers in act two, scene two. One this is burnished to throw. Like a burnished to throw. And second name if you ask. Ask Shakespeare himself what will happen. Sometimes he will say, Oh, I don't know. I have forgotten uh, what I wrote. This, this, this happens with every poet. Uh, you write, you yourself write a poem. After two days, you are, somebody asks you, Can you recite it without referring to your text? You say, I can. So that is. The creative process, the enigma of the creative process. You cannot understand, I cannot understand, the person cannot understand. Once created, it is there before. That's all. So, therefore, this is, it is a very precious faculty. You reasoners and mechanics, please do not say that this is a waste of time. Going after the imagination is a waste of time. I think that one of the, another, uh, another explanation of this creative process is in James Joyce, the portrait of an artist as a young man, that he compares the creative process, the mind as a smithy, smithy. That. So that is that is another uh, way of explaining this. And D.S. Eliot himself said it is a raid on the inarticulate. The world around us chaotic. The poets puts everything in order, but there is a problem there. That is, put, putting things in order means there is some reason, some uh, determination, will power, power of the will. That, that is not the, that, uh, the, we should not take it like that. It's not all. As you can see, already you have seen, no? you sit down, it is just like going out, thinking that today I will see a parrot. You go to a place where there are plenty of parrots, but you can't see even a single one. So it is like that. I think the best example is the one that we already saw, that is, as Shelley said, it is like a fading core. The inspiration, the like wind, this like a fading core. I hope you have, an, you have somehow I managed to impart or transfer this idea, what I have in my, when I, what was in the essay, I tried to absorb. And I think that I have partially succeeded in transferring this idea to you. I am totally partially said because this experience, 
you cannot transfer an experience. If I say like this, the orange is very sweet. What do you understand? For one thing, language is arbitrary. But if you eat, then you will understand what is. Poetic process is like that. Hope, my dear friends, I have done justice to this concept. I hope that you have been following and you have been enjoying. So, we will meet again with another dose of a poet, a defense of poetry by Shelley. Till then, bye, have a nice time. Uh, you, are going, you are getting two or three days holidays. Enjoy your holidays. Enjoy your life. See you again. Bye.